share with you live in the gallery at WDNA.org on the FIU Music Hour page. Now we can bring you the best of FIU to your homes, your studios, and the community. As always, this program features weekly live performances in the WDNA Jazz Gallery, featuring students, faculty, and alumni from Florida International University's School of Music. I am your host this morning, Zachary Weinstein. This morning, we are joined by the Robert Grabowski Trio, led by Robert Grabowski on bass, Jim Gazier on piano, and Rodolfo Zuniga on drums. Robert Grabowski is an educator, author, bassist, historian, composer, arranger, audio engineer, and visual artist who has held a position in jazz studies at FIU for 29 years. In addition, Grabowski has recorded live at the Kennedy Center with Alan Harris and in the studio with Melton Mustafa, Ira Sullivan, Phil Strange, Larry Marshall, and many more. So now we are going to hear Omar A. Amor by Robert Grabowski. Take it away, guys.
Absolutely beautiful. That was Omar A. Amor. Next, we're going to hear Ohm's Groove. Mm-hmm. 
This is the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 88.9 FM, featuring the Robert Grabowski Trio. Now, normally I would invite Robert Grabowski over to the table for our little interview portion. However, due to coronavirus and COVID-19 social distancing, we'll just have to do it across. So uh, if our lovely camera woman could please point the camera at him, uh, we'll get started. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Socially adjust. This way, I hide my. It's like in 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 in, in food processing where you hide your beard. And your mm -hmm. beard so. right. <laughs> well, how are you this morning? It's morning. It's still morning. I knew there was something wrong. <laughs> Fine, thank you. Yourself. I'm all right. Can't complain. So prior to our show this morning, I heard from Rodolfo that you used to lead a Wednesday night radio show called Tobacco Road. What was that? Could you tell me a little Not bit more? Not exactly, but, but, but I can straighten oh. that out. That's okay. Um, actually, it was a club called Tobacco Road that was many things. Uh, originally, originally, it was on the Miami River, uh, and the idea was it was to sell fire water to the Indians who'd come up, the Seminoles would come up in their canoes to buy mm -hmm. booze. And then officially, uh, Al Capone owned it, and in 1914, they gave it a liquor license because it was the safest thing to do. Interesting. Yeah, if you're an Indian. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, it, it's been a bunch of things, and it became one of the sleaziest, most fun clubs uh, probably in the, in the century of, of Miami's history. We've all played there, and it, it, we had a Wednesday night jam session, actually not a radio show. I did radio at, some, at other points. But we had a Wednesday night jam session there for 20 years. Oh, wow. And... Uh, Originally, Mark Crummick, rest in peace, who passed, uh, was leading it from Chicago, and then it passed on to me and, 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 and some other people, and uh, there's been various bands come in and out, and I think, God, Jim, how many years did you play there out of the 20? Probably 15? Yeah. 15 out of the 20. Rodolfo did the last 10 or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's and, incredible. And we all survived. It was an amazing club. It was open till 5. It had one of the 5 o'clock licenses. And they just close the doors at five and keep on drinking. At that point, I was like, <laughs> I'm a lightweight. But uh, we had some amazing sessions. I remember one time Luis Enrique was in playing just for fun. And it was just like the roof lifted off at many points in time. And, and the late uh, Ira Sullivan, who we all remember, uh, just passed, used to come in unannounced and just, he wouldn't even like unpack his horn. He'd just leave his case in the car and walk in with his saxophone while we were playing. Oh, wow. And just, you know, jump up. And so it was that kind of thing where, and, and all the musicians in, in New York and every place when they were touring always knew if they were town on Wednesday, drop by. So we had so many great people. We had uh, Nat Adderley, Cannonball's brother came in. Just, you name it. It, it, just, it was just an honor to be there. Well, is that how you all met? Or was that a different scenario? I, well, actually, I knew Rodolfo for when he came to FIU. And, and I knew he had something going on. Even when you were a freshman, I remember he playing in the big and say, that guy, I remember saying to Dick Dunscombe, yeah, Rodolfo, huh? And then you met up with Duffy. <laughs> that was the end of that. <laughs> and uh, Jim, I've known since the road or before that, I think. I, 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 I knew Peggy way before. Yeah, I remember helping you empty your water bed out the back of your window one day. And <laughs> that was another story. So we've known each other for a while, musically as well, happily. These well, two of the most wonderful guys. Can we have a round of applause or not applause yeah, for Jim Gazer and Rodolfo Zuniga? So yeah, we saw everything from shoe shine contest to various bad behaviors and various good behaviors. <laughs> well, speaking of upcoming good behaviors, what future projects do you have on the horizon? Well, actually, a new album. The first song we played, uh, Omar E. Uh, Amor is, is going to be probably the title cut. Uh, the album's going to be called Midnight Rain. And uh, hopefully we're in pre-production now, hopefully by December. It's, things are a little slow because of the situation, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the virus and all. Well, I can't wait to hear it when it comes out. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> You'll dig it. It's good. It's, it's pretty laid back and mellow, but, you know, it's got some spots in it too, you know. So the opposite of Ohm's Groove. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know where it's going to go yet. You know, the nice thing is when we get together and finally sit down and record, it always is different than I think it's going to be. 
but, but it turns out, you know. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> well, that's incredible. Best of luck to all three of you. Thank you. Um, so we're now going to move on to our third piece of the day, Festival Waltz. Oh, okay. Can I move this? Yeah, please. Okay, thank By you. I mean. Get that out of the way. About yes, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> we haven't talked about my music, but I know time is short and mm -hmm. we play long, so. Um, yeah, Festival Vaults, I wrote this years ago and we used to do a lot of outdoor festivals back in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is sort of my impression of what it's like to like, have 10,000 people in the Grove drinking beer and listening to good music. I used to do production. I produced a lot of concerts at one point for the university, for FIU, as well as for other people, plus large events in the Grove. And one time we had, uh, I think it was U of M Jazz Band opening for Dave Sanborn, opening for the Neville Brothers. And the production guy was tutoring, who was tutoring me, who was mentoring me, timed it and had me go out there and take measurements of the temperature and what time the sun set for like five days before the show. And I thought, what in the world does he want to know all that for? But okay, so I did it, I went down to the Grove and you know, recorded exactly what he wanted before camera phones as would take it a mm -hmm. picture. And he timed it so beautifully that by the time the Neville Brothers went on, the sun was going down right in the grove, right up on the water, and the Neville Brothers nevelized everybody. No one sat down for two hours. And uh, it just, it, it, it tore me up. It was so beautiful. So, Festival Waltz.
You just heard Festival Waltz from the Robert Grombowski Trio 
on the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 88.9 FM. We'll be right back after these messages. We are back on the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 80.9 FM with the Robert Grabowski Trio. Next, we're going to hear In My Dream. Just to, to go there.
You've been listening to the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 88.9 FM. Although we are still social distancing, you can always hear us on the FIU Music Hour. We'd love to share our talents and faculty with musicians in our community, so make sure to call 305-348-2896 if you'd like more information on all of our music programs. And don't forget to follow us on our FIU Music Hour page on Facebook to stay up to date with all of our upcoming music performances. Next week on the FIU Music Hour, we will be joined by the RTZ Trio. I am your host, Zachary Weinstein, and along with our producers, Karen fuller Velos and Rodolfo Zuniga, we'd like to remind you to tune in to next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Uh, on the radio or live streaming. So thank you so much for joining us this week. And to uh, finish us off, we're going to hear uh, from the Robert Grabowski Trio, Norwegian Wood, for Ira. Yes, of course. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us, number one. Thank you, Rodolfo, Karen, and our wonderful host. Thank you for that. Um, as the community knows, we lost Ira Sullivan last week. It's one of the most important uh, musicians ever to cross Miami and Chicago and uh, the world, really. I don't think there's a musician in, that I know of today that's happening at all that wasn't uh, influenced by Ira in some fashion. And that goes for Winton, his posse, everybody from Miami, obviously, you know, Jocko and Bobby Economo and all that. It, it's endless. I happen to be Unitarian, too. So I was aware of Unitarian uh, Church Jam on Mondays with Ira. Oh, since I was pretty small, since he started it. So carrot cake, coffee, and Ira. I remember Jocko uh, at the time when he first met the Ira was driving a Mustang, two-door Mustang. Jocko was very fond of large amplifiers, acoustic 360s, the size of refrigerators. And I remember the first half hour of the Ira Sullivan gig, the first time Jocko played at the Unitarian Church, we spent half an hour getting his amp out of the back of his Mustang. It was not a convertible. But it was worth it because he played beautifully, but it was still, Jocko, why don't you get a station wagon, you know, or a van or something, right? Ira. And, and I mentored all of us in one way or another, myself included. He gave me my very first jazz gig, as bad as I was back then. And at other points, Ira has uh, somewhat aggressively at times mentored me to be a better bass player. Let's put it that way. He's, he's a wonderful cat. And uh, I don't know how we can ever remember him in any decent way, but uh, as jazz musicians, this is the way we do it. Um, he always played Amazing Grace but I don't feel that's my song to play for him. But I do remember him playing endless versions. And I mean endless meaning like half an hour, 45 minutes with Vince and everybody just like forever playing a Beatles tune that he was fond of. I, I don't know why, but he just loved it. So uh, in honor of Ira, we're gonna play a, a little bit of Norwegian Wood until you give us the signal that we're on our way. You have it in E, right?
fair.